the voice of one crying out in the wilderness the voice of one in the desert crying out Friends, this is your host, Stephen Black, bringing to you Freedom Realize Live. And today is a big day for our ministry staff as I'm putting a little bit of pressure on some people here at First Stone Ministries uh, to do a panel discussion on what we are calling the Sway Away. And the Sway Away, and Spence, if you could put that uh, graphic up, this is uh, a confrontation, and it is a confrontation, uh, because we're talking about souls and contending for the faith of people that are being swayed away uh, to fall away uh, with this Pray Away documentary. And so we're gonna, we, we, we watched the documentary this week, our staff did, on Wednesday, and uh, we want to, to give a... Um, a perspective, and we hope to really bring a compassionate and yet biblically bold truth offering. As every week we come with Freedom Realized to bring you bold truth, uh, bold courage, and bold compassion. And um, you know, I'm a bit of a um, a lightning rod when it comes to bold truth. Uh, I get told that a lot, uh, but I have to say this staff really demonstrates a multiplicity of gifting. Uh, We've got some amazing people starting here with our director of women's ministries. This is Laura Lee Stanlake. And then uh, beside her is Laura Beth Perry, our our women's minister intern, who's been with us now for going on how long? A year and a half. Year and a half. And then uh, excuse me, Jim Farrington is our men's minister. And uh, he also leads up our parent group. And then Joseph Thiessen, uh is our office administrator. And he, um, he takes c- good care of us in uh, technical things and usually doesn't like to be on camera. No, I don't. And, and, uh, but you're, you're willing to, to come today because you also have a very compassionate part to offer uh, with understanding from your own life. All of us have come out of some level of sexual sin and brokenness, primarily out of the LGBTQ plus sign. I I call it chaos, and it really is chaotic. And so we want to give a a firm answer to this. And so with that, we are going to go ahead and play the trailer to what was uh, the Netflix movie that came out uh, called Pray Away. So Spence, if you would, let's play the trailer. I was active in the gay community for 13 years. I was in it for six years, then struggled for five years before finding true freedom. It was 13 years for me. Four for me. We both walked away from it. I personally came out of the homosexual lifestyle. And we're just saying that if you want to change, there is a way to do it. I spent a lot of time thinking, how did I believe that? 
We were the leaders of the ex-gay movement. We believed that something must have happened to make you gay. Parents are learning about a program called Exodus, which claims to convert gays. We were promoting an idealized version of life. Gay people could be saved. I became a figurehead for this movement. My role was to get the message out. Homosexuality was changeable. I ached to be loved and to love a man. I went to my first Exodus conference when I was 17 years old. I remember feeling like this is the path to be good. It was awful pseudo-psychology. I started having panic attacks, the same sex attractions. Those never went away. We had guys that attempted suicide because they felt guilty that they couldn't change. I'm looking at you. How does it feel to be broken? Is that a big deal? The voice inside me said, how could you do that to your own people? There are new people taking up the torch. I live transgender, and, and I left everything to follow the Lord. There's so much shame. We're killing ourselves by not embracing who God created us to be. Lord, we want you back. Are you okay, not... um, I'm sorry, go ahead and keep playing it. A person who fights with yourself every day. Right. Yeah, that's important to see John Polk say that because um, part of the spirit of this documentary really is deception. And, um, and he himself admitted he's kind of the king of deception. And um, there is, uh, there's so many things that could be said, but um, uh, I want to say that the thing that I came away with, the, the first thing that struck me was a soft mocking. And, uh, and I say soft because it's not really overt uh, in some ways to the unsuspecting. Uh, they use Jeffrey McCall's testimony, which they think is, you know, silly, but he actually spoke some really good truth. Um, I, I'm not an advocate of participating in something like that, but, you know, I think Jeffrey's heart and many of these freedom marchers are, their, their hearts are just totally in love with Jesus. Uh, but a lot of people can start totally in love with Jesus, can't they? And we've seen it. We, we used to walk with Randy Thomas. I know him. Uh, I knew Alan Chambers. I did conferences with these people. Uh, I led the prayer, uh, uh, the prayer team up for the conference several years for the national conference. I was the chairman of the ministry council uh, when it closed. I am the one who actually started bringing the confrontation to the perverted antinomianism hyper grace message behind the scenes. We actually did walk out Matthew 18 with these with these leaders and uh, try to bring restoration to Exodus, but the Exodus board of 2013 would not have it. And uh, they continue to empower Alan Chambers. And so we see that the fruit of this documentary is squarely based upon Alan Chambers pastor, Clark Witten, who used to be the pastor here in Oklahoma City of one of the larger churches called Metro Church, who wrote a book called Pure Grace, which is pure heresy. And uh, I want to just uh, read a couple of things, and then I want to get some comments from the staff. But uh, here is an article, and it's on our website, and Spence, you can put it up there. It's called Perverting Grace. And uh, you can go to uh, First Stone Ministries' website, and you can read this. But I want to just read a few of these uh, heretical statements that are actually most of these red red statements are literally from Clark Witten's book or from one of his teachings at Exodus. And he, he says things like, you do not need to confess your sins any longer to God 
1 John 1, 9 is not written to Christians. Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit does not need to convict you of sin. The idea that the Holy Spirit comes to convict you of sin is a grotesque misrepresentation of repentance and that it is heathenistic. This is, this is, this is Clark Witten saying these things. Jesus Christ or the Holy Spirit will not make you feel guilty, shame, or rebuke you about your sin. God, if he didn't do that, I don't know where we'd be. I'm so grateful that he does rebuke me and causes me to have natural shame to deal with my sin. You do not need to greet, uh, you cannot greet the Holy Spirit when you sin. I mean, some of these statements are, are, are just almost absolutely crazy. So folks, I just wanted to point out, if you want to understand why we have the pray away, which is a swaying away of of souls uh, back into LGBTQ, it squarely was based upon Clark Witten's pure grace teaching that got a hold of Alan Chambers because Clark Witten was kind of like his, his daddy and chairman of the, of the board. So that's kind of some history. Now that is what we looked at last week. If you want to go back and look at the Freedom Realize, the videos from last week, we actually exposed some of that. So we watched this movie or documentary, which is kind of a mockumentary. Uh, Laura Lee, when you were watching it, what are some of the things that you saw? Well, I was really taken with Jeffrey McCall because, you know, um, in the beginning, even for me, it was really important to make a clear stand and just say, this is why there's a hope in me. This is what I stand for. And, but, you know, it bothered me quite a bit that they were, they were, they were casting him against all of this other stuff, right. you know, which, which is an accusation, isn't it? That this might not be true because everything that we're about to say is more true. Um, I was really struck by that, but a couple of, a couple of things that just really ate at me is if they're still claiming Christ. Uh, one of them at least is not. But if if the rest still claim Christ, there was just a complete lack of the testimony of the Lord. Right. You there know, wasn't any scripture. I didn't hear very, no, very, except to mock it. To, yeah, they mocked our, our some of the key uh, witnesses. First Corinthians one. 6, 9 through yeah. 11. Mm -hmm. And but, even Romans 2. Verse four. That, I think that was the most egregious thing I, I heard. And we'll, we'll look at that here in a minute. The, but you know, it's it, when, when somebody sets out, this is one of the, my takeaways, when somebody comes out and they say by their own testimony, everything that I've ever testified to before wasn't true. And what I'm saying now is true. <laughs> what is, what is the witness that I'm hearing? And it, it just felt really thin. Personally, because I know some of these players personally, um, really having a season of friendship with Randy Thomas and really having a, a regard for, for Yvette at the time, um, I was especially offended by them. Yeah. Uh, because, you know, we when you walk together and one walks away, it's hard to not feel the pain of their rebellion, their rejection of the truth. So when you think about what was presented in the documentary, what are some key points of what they are presenting that you found to be a mocking of the truth? Yeah, uh, so they didn't really make a defense for the conversion therapy view. Uh, the idea of conversion therapy um, but while while giving and giving a statement that, that this is a grassroots peer oriented heart to heart people walking together that's what exodus was not it wasn't about therapy it wasn't about a uh, top down authority or except it became that well it did become that but yeah. it wasn't that right um, wasn't that initially um to know that that one one person who who left early so back in the 70s, this person's been walking completely opposed to Christ since the 70s. Um, to have him be the guy 
who is setting the stage for all this, um, it was really frustrating to yeah. me. Um, he's been an open advocate the whole time. That that guy has. But yeah, she's talking about Michael, Michael Bussey, Bussey, which is a bit ironic that he would talk about that what we offer or what Exodus offered is pseudo-psychology. Now, folks, you have to understand, it's kind of like the same kind of mindset that men can be women and women can be men, okay? Right. They're saying that what we offer or what the gospel of Jesus Christ does in changing the soul is pseudo-psychology, ironically, the very thing they're promoting with their orientation narrative is, is actually pseudo-psychology. Pseudo -psychology. Right. It's not hard science. Psychology is not even hard science. And so you have to catch these things and, and understand. So let's, uh, Joseph, I want to go to you because I know you, I, re I read some things that you specifically wrote and I thought they were very powerful. So what are you, what is your takeaway? And you have to understand this is a very kind, gentle man and yet he saw some very truthful things. Yeah, I'd say, I mean, the biggest thing that I saw was that grieved my heart, really, is that the church overall has, has missed its mission. They're not communicating what it means to be a believer. And just like Stephen said, that the Clark Witten thing is really, that's like the worst of the worst. But this greasy grace topic is so pervasive that people don't the people of exodus in this documentary had no idea that choosing the lord means laying down your life right it, it does not it there was no part in any of their talk about a personal devotion to jesus it was a form of religion um performance performance you know they got and, and often they would say, like Yvette said, she's seeking a tribe. Randy Thomas used the word my people, referring to the gay community, you know, whenever he was, you know, hearing their pain, you know. And so it's like they're, these people are more pain at somebody's feelings get hurt, getting hurt than about the need for repentance. And that that was alarming. It was actually very a stark contrast in the in the film, completely. Heartless involvement in the church, no personal devotion to Jesus. At least they didn't convey it. Right. They they would say they did, but the reality is is that we know these players. I, I know most of these people personally, and they had unrepentant pornography use, unrepentant fantasy. Uh, unrepentant uh, association to the things that were full of frivolity and perversion with the homosexual community. I mean, I remember even at a conference, Randy Thomas said, my people, I'm going, uh, wait, my people are the people that do the will of God, not those people. I don't associate with the gay community. They never left the world. These people's hearts were completely divided and they had one foot in and one foot out. That was the testimony that I saw throughout the entire time. I mean, I thought the worst decision that was ever made in Exodus's history was putting Alan Chambers as the executive director, one of the worst. So that's, that's really good. So <clears throat> any other stark things that you saw in this documentary? I mean, it's, it's the, I mean, the one of the first things, the faith movement is misteaching. Um, that speaking the truth without walking out, like, well, faith without works is dead. So it's like they're making, de you know, they were taught to make declarations in some groups, mm. but they failed to understand that working it out, doing the work, being devoted to the Lord actually is the thing that produces change and makes it. Uh, what's the word? Uh, there's a scripture we're going to read about being blasphemed. Look, you know, looking back on somebody and goes like, "Well, what? What were you doing?" Um, I don't, I don't, 
Anyhow, right. that's good. That, but um, I, I think the idea of change, you know, they, they're always combating this idea that we talk about change. And Alan Chambers, you know, saw, if you watch the Freedom uh, Realize last week, I had, you know, him at the GCN that started some of this craziness back in January of 2012. And Alan proclaimed to the world, which is used over and over and over. And what gave rise to this whole pray away is 99.9% .9 of people don't change. And that is like one of the most ridiculous statements. Uh, people change all the time. And they are like the Hotel California. You can come into homosexuality. I mean, in a Hotel California, for you young ones, you may not know, but it's an Eagle song based upon Anton LaVey, who is the head of, was, he's dead now, he's in hell, uh, most likely, um, the head of the Satanist church, because that's, you know, he wants to be with Satan. He was the head of, of the Satanist church. And it was, you can come into the Hotel of California, but you can never leave. And it's a cult-like mentality. Well, we need to actually realize LGBTQ plus sign is very much secular humanism with like a cult-like um, uh, demand that you can come in, but you can never leave. So none of you people exist. I don't exist. You know, I was a former homosexual almost 40 years ago. And, you know, it's like these people don't exist. My, my report is even mocked by even the side B type Greg Johnson type people, which are actually probably even more dangerous than these pray away, you know, out and loud, proud gay people, uh, because they're actually muddying the waters in the church in ways that are just bringing such confusion with Preston Sprinkle and, and um, Wesley Hill and some of these, these pro-gay advocates that are saying they're celibate, but they're living this identity. And they're saying they can't change. Nobody can change. And they're all buying into, really, it's the bales of the American Psychological Association, which is they're bowing down to the orientation narrative. And that was, I think, profound in this documentary, wouldn't you all say? Yes. How about, how about Laura Beth? What do, you, what do you have to say about some of the things you saw in this documentary? As a matter of fact, just tell the audience, what, why why are you even here? What And it, just a snippet yeah. um, of your testimony. Well, I lived as transgender for almost nine years, and I'd had all the surgeries and the hormones and just that entire identity. But I left it to follow Christ. And I thought it was absolutely going to kill me. I actually begged the Lord to take my life because I saw no way out. I, there was no hope for change. And yet God has transformed my heart um, through the power of the cross, through through his death in me and uh, being raised to life with him. This is about new life. This is not about being better and doing doing better behavior. It's about being transformed by Christ. And that was one of my big takeaways was I heard so much about self-effort and um, Michael Bussey even said that they kept claiming that God was changing them at all these conferences, but God is not wanting to just change our sexuality. We're supposed to change in many other ways. And this is not something that we can do um, through our own efforts. This has to be the work of Christ in our lives and in our hearts as we, um, as we lay down our lives for him, as we continually surrender to him and receive his grace um, to overcome our sin. Um, and then, um, I think it was, um, one of the things that struck me was that, uh, uh, even Julie lamented that no one told her that God loves you exactly the way you are and you don't have to change a thing, but that's not true in any kind of sin, you know, much less this, but, um, any condition of the heart that, that need, that is sinful, the Lord wants to change. I mean, what would be the point, um, in him bringing us salvation if he wants to leave us exactly the way we are, there's no hope in that. I think they just, um, they want their ticket punched to heaven like we've talked about. Yeah, they do. How about you, Jim? What was your takeaway with some of the points that you saw in the documentary? Well, going into watching the documentary, I already had firsthand knowledge of uh, the inner workings of these people's secret, secret sinful uh, practices that they were doing without any accountability that, that, that eventually led to this this point of being overtaken by the flesh. The and the word says that that they who sow to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. 
there there's no way that you can open up the doors to the demonic and then complain about the demons that you that you've allowed in and right. and um, can you get me a little more specific when you saw these testimonies of these people? What, what are you referring to? Well, the, this, the, the expressions, the things that they said, like she, and Michael Bussey was saying, if we kept claiming that God was changing you, then he would. There's no faith in that. That's not even based on truth. And yet Michael Bussey was hooking up with Gary Cooper from the very first conference. Yeah. And here's the thing, folks. He claims like he was one of the fathers of Exodus. He was an errand boy. And uh, he did help organize. Uh, I talked specifically with Frank Worthen about those days. And, um, and then he claims he was with them until the early 80s. And yet Exodus did not even really get its full biblical charter until like 1982, uh, where it was squarely going to be a biblical offering. And, you know, so the, the idea of even Michael Bussey having a, a, a voice in this is, is pretty laughable. Right. Um, and then you got John Polk. Right. I mean, you know, John Polk, did, this guy is uh, one of the most deceptive, narcissistic, broken people I have ever witnessed. Uh, living a dual lifestyle, boasting about his love of gay pornography on Randy Thomas's feed. Right. The whole time he's married, he's boasting about, even in this documentary, that he was a porn user. And then showing up in gay bars and hooking up. What was he doing? We don't know the depth of it, actually. Uh, but we do know that he has people that have testified about working with him on YouTube about impropriety as a boss. And yeah. so, you know, these people, uh, they just live very immoral lives and they claim Christ. And it's really a sad thing. Go it's ahead. it's so sad. We're getting ready to get into the scripture about this. And, and this is so important uh, that people understand what the Word of God has to say. The yeah. Word of God really does confront this. And uh, and that's a that's a, uh, a very hopeful thing yeah. in knowing the truth, right? Mm -hmm. Well, any other comments about this documentary and bringing the truth to this? I mean, you think about, I mean, the pain of it is pretty painful uh, to watch these people. Um, we have great compassion and really hope that that there can be a, a a grace given, but the warnings in Scripture about people that are doing the level of mocking and scoffing and falling away, it's a narrow way, folks. And two things I've been saying a lot, and I'll just I'll uh, stop here and I want to ask you guys, but two things that I notice in, in, in the evangelical church right now that are really missing, especially within Calvinist groups, the fear of God is removed. They, they pray prayers. They don't, they don't teach a completely surrendered life. The fear of the Lord is removed. And the other thing that first century Christianity had was the imminency of, of death. That, you know, they lived with the Roman Empire down on top of them at any moment dying by the Roman sword or crucifixion even. And we don't live with that in America these certainly these people they they live for the for the pleasures of their life and the pleasures of of, of this world and uh so I, I wanted to mention that so any other comments before we get into the scriptures yeah i was really struck by i think julie and randy both talking about how they they went to people that were had come out of these ministries and they listened to their stories and um julie said she'd heard like 40 different stories and it's like it reminded me of Eve listening to Satan in the garden. You know, has God really said? And we, we've got to be careful who we're listening to. Yeah, Julie. that's really well said because, um, you know, the history, because I know a lot of this history. As a matter of fact, I want to point out, and Spence, you can put this up. If you want to know more about the history of the debacle and the fall of Exodus, get my book, Freedom Realized. My, the, the intro to this book talks about the reason for the book, which was Alan proclaiming nobody changes. And so we did a survey. We had 16 other leaders contribute to this book. And we found that um, over 70% of the people that really devoted themselves to Christ really went on to live a life fully surrendered to Jesus. And nowhere in my book does it say that people aren't struggling with some forms of temptation or even same-sex attraction, as some of these detractors say that the survey says, which it doesn't say that. 
it actually says that people go on to live completely surrendered to Jesus. And these saying people don't change. And But anyhow, in this book, it talks about the behind the scenes of what took place with this debacle and later implosion. So any anything else about the documentary? Joseph? Uh, toward the end, they showed, they talked about the uh, legal changes, like, well, Prop 8 in California and how all Janet the Janet Meffer today. And uh, they, they, I mean, obviously they're mocking that and they're like, as long as Christianity exists, this issue, this problem we have will, will continue. And it was a, they didn't say much, but it was like an open, like the church is our next battlefield. Oh, that that's exactly yeah. what this is. Matter of fact, I watched an interview. I was going to queue it up for today, but we have enough for today. Yvette Cantu Schneider in a interview, which is out there on the pray away. She ends by saying, we have to deal with the church now. In other words, the gospel of Jesus Christ, the darkness that entered into her by listening to, well, and we saw even in the video, she's listening to a new age Buddha earring, you know, counselor, right? And obviously a new age counselor. And she was into spirit guides. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's really sad, the level of darkness that has entered into some of these people's lives. But squarely, they're coming after the church next. So it's not just us. And they want to call anybody that offers the gospel of hope for change as conversion therapy. It's almost crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Anybody else? Yeah, long before we were an organization, before organizations even existed, we were already we were already sharing with other people the hope that was in us. Jesus who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And the reality of having to hold a testimony, keep a testimony in the face of opposition is the normal Christian life That's good. in most of the world, right? So we have to, I have to, I have to hold on to this testimony, not, uh, not in order to be safe, but in order to be true to him. Um, I was so, I was so struck, I guess, by, um, you know, the, just the shame when they talked about uh, feeling shames. And by the way, I can't, I even give them this understanding. I, I kind of hated the conferences as well. Personally, uh, I knew why we gathered, but you know, it, it was a, also a hotbed. You gathered a lot of people who were in a lot of different places of struggle. And, um, you know, I get jostled in, in the conferences. They were hard for me, but when they begin to process just, uh, you know, as they, cut the pieces together of how to tell the story. They talked about these places of having discussion about things that could change that might help us separate from the old life. And they were kind of casting disparagements on it. And I remember, I remember also feeling embarrassed at the idea that I needed to change some external things as well as I separated from my old life. Right. For, 14 years in same, really in same sex, exclusively drawn to women and sexual addiction. And so for the Lord to get all of that junk going in a new direction, I had to begin to agree with him that I had cultivated an exterior and that I was conducting my life in such a way that fed all of that. And, um, I'm, you know, I've just been thinking a lot, you know, it's like, how do we, how do we put to death the flesh? They they couldn't acknowledge that. But actually, how you put to death the flesh, according to Romans 8, is if by the power of the Spirit, you're putting to death the deeds of the flesh, the sinful deeds of the flesh, you will live. But if you're giving yourself over to the deeds of the flesh, you will die. That's Romans 8 in the place where we talk about liberty. There that's, is, that's really there good. is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Who walk which, not after the flesh, but after the spirit. But after the spirit. Yeah. yeah. And so that for me, I, you know, as I listened, it's like, okay, what we, what we've put together are pieces that say, Hey, I was, I was striving, but I was duplicitous about it the whole time. I mean, that's what they said anyway. 
they tried to be sincere, but you know, uh, when Julie Rogers said that uh, Living Hope Ministry yeah. in Texas dared to say that you couldn't have pornography, <laughs> and or, and her her even the way she mentioned about masturbation, obviously the girl had a problem with masturbation, right? And maybe even pornography. Yeah, yeah, very um, sad. Or that they wanted to be protective so that people would build relationships outside of the ministry that were healthy rather than try to build a community of, I don't know, same Broken people, that. yeah. It's like, I, I was like, well, right. I, you know, I agree with what they were giving counsel to if what your witness is right. Julie. Yeah, and what betrayal these people, I the, the, so. the John Paul thing with his wife and family and the church. I, I mean, the level of betrayal is, is exposing their family. Oh, in this disgusting. Document, Taking the videos of their family and turning it over to these people. The level of betrayal from Alan Chambers and Clark Witten to turn over somebody from our ministry's testimony at this conference who was in association with us turned his testimony over to these gay advocates and these testimonies in this video was squarely supposed to be used for the purposes of the faith not the unbelief these people are so filled with unbelief and then the betrayal of ricky Sh ricky Shillette, the level of hate and unloving and and disparaging that came from these people and it would you know it's it, it is kind of sappy and interesting when you say you know i love you but here's a little here here's a cup of water and you put a little bit of poison in it it's it's just as hateful and cruel if you do that in kind tones as if you do screaming and these people think because there's whispering in very effeminate and very wispy tones and, you know, Randy Thomas's cry away, his cry away times. It, it just is the level of betrayal is so, so egregious and grieves the Holy Spirit of God deeply. And they, they, they have no fear of God. They just don't care. No, but I do pity them. I pity I, them like too. You, you, we walked together. We were all going into the house of the Lord at some point mm -hmm. and you have departed from the truth. And I am... It freaks me out for them, honestly, to know what what the condition of their soul is. Yeah. To be With there. that, we should get into the scripture. Um, we're yeah, we're running out of time, and yeah. I want to go ahead and go to Second uh, Timothy. Spence, if you would pre please bring up the uh, the scriptures here. Second Timothy, uh, chapter three, um, and I'm reiterating from last week, but know this. That in the last days, perilous times are coming. Uh, for men will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proudful, blasphemous, blasphemers. They are so blasphemous in this sway away. Uh, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy. I mean, folks, I just have to stop there. Do you realize what they're advocating in LGBTQ plus sign sexual behaviors? Let that sink in. It's detestable in the sight of God. And, it, you know, it's so unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brooders, despisers of good, traitors. Boy, are they traitors, betrayers, headstrong, haughty. They are so full of pride and narcissism, which is really, uh, you know, the whole banner thing is so full of pride. Lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And they have a form of godliness. There they are getting married in the, you know, the, the uh, national cathedral and thinking that that is so holy. It's a form of godliness, but they deny the power of God and go into sexual perversion. The scripture says, and from, from such people, turn away. Don't go have dinner with Michael Bussey, Alan, who led this charge into bringing this corruption into Exodus for this sort of those who they creep into households. They're creepy, actually making captives of gullible women or just gullible people loaded, loaded down with sins. They lead, they are leading away, leading people away with their various orientations, their various lusts and desires. It says always learning 
and they they think they're learning. They're so smart, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Folks, the knowledge of the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ, like you were saying earlier, Jim, what is the bottom line on that story you saw this morning? You you before we got on online, you 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 mentioned the Mark four. Yeah. Or Mark not four, but Mark um, I think it's Mark. So well, just, just okay, just tell us what what was the the story was yeah, the and, rich young ruler. Right. So so in Mark ten verse verse seventeen, a man approaches Jesus and falls down at his feet and said, What must I do to be saved? And Jesus told him, he said, first of all, he called him a good teacher. He said, why do you call me good? No one is good, but that is God. You know the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not murder. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Do not defraud. Honor your father and mother. And this guy says, well, I've done all these things from, from, from my youth. And Jesus, what struck me is it says, then Jesus looking at him, loved him. And Love. said to him, Love. I think that needs bear repeating. Yeah. Jesus, what? Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come, take up your cross and follow me. What does that mean? Take up your cross. Death and to self. Living your what? crucified life. What did you say, Laura Beth? Death to self. Does that does that bear witness with you, Joseph? It's the cross, isn't it? Yeah. Is cross is the Lord Lee? Is the cross uh, delightful or painful? Oh, painful! It it's an affront. It's an abuse. Yeah. So they're saying, "Oh, we have so much peace now that we've embraced it." But the Christian life is not one of necessarily peace and dying to self. Oh, there is peace in God when you are finally walking in freedom. And that's the sad thing about these people's testimonies, is it? Yeah. They lived in duality. They lived in sin. And now they're saying, we want to sway you all away. Come follow us. And isn't there a scripture? Matter of fact, uh, Laura Beth, why don't you go to Romans 1 and just leave the, read the last verse of Romans 1. And although they knew the ordinance of God, that those who practice such things are worthy of death, they not only do the same, but also give hearty approval to those who practice them. What does that say to you guys? When you read that in context of Romans 1, which we hopefully you know that the Romans 1 passage is really dealing with the core of a biblical precedent that is a condemnation on homosexual behavior. That not only do they know the truth deep down, they, the law of God is written on their heart. They do know the truth to some degree, but they choose to turn away with, from it. But they also, they love other people that, that also do the same things. And they give hearty approval to them. That's why this is the sway away. It really is to sway souls away in falling away in this pray away documentary. Yeah. Okay, so Joseph, I want you, if you would, read 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11. Or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice homosexuality, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you. But you were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and by the spirit of our God. So the thing I think one of the things, uh, and I'd like y'all's comments on that, but I think it, they started out with mocking that very passage. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a soft mocking, you know, but it's there. And I was so grieved by it because they're actually mocking God's word. And um, uh, any comments about that? Yeah, so a lot of times we think that that's a standalone set of verses but it's actually a witness throughout throughout uh, certainly Paul's letters and Peter, um, James. They you know the witness that there there is a once was but now you are. That's good. And um, at the end of First Corinthians six, doesn't it, doesn't it then remind us why why this is? Don't you know that your bodies are a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, 
whom you have from God. You're not your own. You're bought with a price. So glorify God with your bodies. And it's like, well, we're all, honestly, right? We're all trying to figure that out because we all have appetites and desires. And 1 Corinthians 6 addresses that. That's good. But, but regarding sexual immorality, the fact of it being a defilement, the fact that it is an affront to the seal, the witness, the indwelling presence of God in the heart of a believer is the thing that strikes me. Yeah, with that, would you go to Luke's uh, Gospel, uh, chapter 17? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. you, we were in our staff meeting and delighting in the in the word of the Lord, and Laura brought this yesterday, and I've asked her to share this. Yes, yeah, so I went to bed pretty heavy-hearted on Wednesday night, just uh, actually interceding, interceding for them, the players in that, interceding for Jeff, Jeffrey McCall, and really, uh, we had already heard that one of our own was was uncovered in this uh, documentary. And we prayed for Ricky Shillette and the yeah, yeah. Living Hope team. Just really, you know, just, and Restored Hope Network. And and really, all of us who are carrying this witness, because because it is an affront. It, it's a kind of shaming, and um, you know, which is a promise, by the way. We're promised that if we're going to live godly in Christ Jesus, we will be persecuted. But the, but in that I was going to bed and as I was going to sleep, I just, I began to meditate on this portion of scripture, John, uh, Luke 17 verse one. And he said to his disciples, it is inevitable that stumbling blocks should come, but woe to him through whom they come. It would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were thrown into the sea, then he should cause one of these little ones to stumble. Be on your guard. If your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. By the way, it says, if he repents, forgive him. And if he sins against you seven times a day and returns to you seven times a day saying, I repent, forgive him. And the apostles responded, Lord, increase our faith. Why would they say, why would they say that you think? I think that the, the nature of the pushback, uh, the nature of that reality is uh, it's a temptation to bitterness. It's a, a temptation to callousness and jadedness and um, just you know we I think we all grow weary under the, the, the cultural battle. I think that we grow weary under the confusion within the church, we do. Mm -hmm. um, we grow weary of honestly hearing another one that falls and saying that they're being more true now than they were before. Yeah, which we know is absolutely a lie. But, you know, the Jesus said. This would happen. This would happen. Yeah. And, um, you know, the promise, If even though there's a great falling away, you know, there's also a great harvest that's looking for harvesters, mm. you know. Those freedom marchers are marching away. <laughs> you know, they are. And, and, you know, I'm being convicted. It's like, well, maybe I should participate in some of those because, you know, it is. They certainly would benefit from your many years of wisdom. Lord. Yeah. They really would. Some, some, but I look at they it. They really need it, help, like, some of them. Do you know what this is really saying, though? That if you come one of the little ones to stumble, yeah. it is better to be thrown into the sea. You know, and, you know, I, I only ever thought of that verse in the context of abuse because I can, I can see that so clearly, you know, people struggling for a lifetime because of the violations, it affects trust. It All affects of us, peace. everybody here. Yeah. And, you know, you know, it's just a common, it's a common theme for, for most of us to yeah. have experienced that. But in, but in fact, this, this comes in the in the context of forgiveness this comes in the context of um you know that there are people who will cause others to stumble with they false exist. teaching but this is true yeah and you know uh while we were in staff meeting i i remembered you know if hey if we even if we come back to you later and begin to preach a different gospel or even mm -hmm. angels would come and preach a different gospel don't believe it because there's, there are, we do get turned. 
you know? It's we, not we how you start different. this race, but how. How we finish. That's right. We have to finish it's, the race. This this is a race that you have to endure to the end. To the end. You have to. Over and over in the words of our Lord, yeah. over and over in the revelation, you must be overcomers. Yeah. You must endure to the end. So with that, um, wow, we are r- running out of time. What is our time, Spence? Okay. Well, I really want us to get to um, uh, Hebrews 3, if you would. Let's read that, and then I want to make sure we get to Second Peter chapter 2. You two have that. Um, Hebrews 3, verse 12? Yeah, well, verses, yeah, 12 through 14. 12 through 14, okay. Take care, brethren, lest there should be in any one of you an evil, unbelieving heart in falling away from the living God. But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, lest any one of you be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold fast the beginning of our assurance firm until the end. While it is said, today if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as when they provoked me. For who provoked him when they had heard? Indeed, did not all those who came out of Egypt led by Moses? And with whom was he angry for 40 years? Was it not those who sinned, whose bodies fell in the wilderness? And to whom did he swear that they should not enter his rest, but Mm -hmm. those who were disobedient? And so we see that they were not able to enter because of unbelief. Yeah. The sin of unbelief, folks, is the greatest, I mean, is the root of all sin. And they know they don't believe the promises of God. Right. They're not listening to the warnings of God. They're even mocking it. They're mocking this. And they're making us people that really want to follow the Lord marginalized and uh, made fun of. True. And they've cut themselves off in the faith. They're, they're not really talking about the nature of unbelief coming into their hearts. So they're cutting themselves off from the fellowship and it becomes calloused and hardened. You know, unable to even receive beyond feeling. Right. These people become that kind of callous. What, is, what does it mean when it says deceitful? Oh. Yeah. It's deceiving. Yeah. People who deceive. Yeah. Deceitful sin. Yeah. Deceitful loss. Yeah. yeah. I would say same sex attraction or unnatural affections. Right. That's yeah. what Romans 1 says. It's, but, but it's also, deceitful, but, isn't but, it? But even self justifying bitterness. Right. Um, the things that the things that just like want to stay in place in the heart that that open the door to all that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go to Second Peter chapter two. Yeah. And before I read it, um, Julie Rogers said, "My whole life was structured around not being gay. Had nothing to do with embracing crucifixion. Had nothing to do mm-hmm. with allowing Jesus to um, come into those places of her life that were disordered." But it was about self self effort and self will, and sure, her focus was on her gayness. Yeah, by her own admission, right? Um, I'll read one through eleven. Then you read one okay. through twenty-two. Sure. Okay. But there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them and bring on themselves with destruction. What are they bringing on themselves? With destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. By covetousness, they will exploit you with deceptive words. For a long time, their judgment has not been idle, and their destruction does not slumber. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, and did not spare the ancient world, but saved Noah, one of eight people, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood on the world of the ungodly, and turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them to destruction, making them an example of those who afterward would live ungodly. Let's stop there for a second. Literally, the example in the New Testament, in Peter's epistle and in Jude, marks the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sexual immorality and they were destroyed because of unrepentant sexual immorality. Yeah. And delivered righteous Lot, who was oppressed 
by the filthy conduct of the wicked, for that righteous man dwelling among them tormented his righteous soul from day to day by seeing and hearing their lawless deeds. Then the Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust under punishment for the day of judgment, and especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanness and despise authority. They are presumptuous, self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. So they're presumptuous and they're self-willed and they actually are propping up their flesh and the lust of the uncleanness of their lives. And what authority are they despising? Ultimate authority, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas angels who are greater in might and power do not bring a reviling judgment against them before the Lord. But these, like unreasoning animals born as creatures of instinct to be captured and killed, reviling where they have no knowledge, will in the destruction of those creatures also be destroyed. Suffering wrong as the wages of doing wrong, they count it a pleasure to revel in the daytime. They are stains and blemishes, reveling in their deceptions as they carouse with you. Having that, this... that, is, that really does kind of describe the whole sway away. Mm -hmm. yeah. There are spots and blemishes carousing in their own deceptions while they feast with you. Yeah. Having eyes full of adultery and that never cease from sin, enticing unstable souls. Having oh, a... enticing who? Unstable souls. The weak ones that are uh, that are unsure that yeah. they want to sway them away. Yeah. Uh, having a heart trained in greed. Wow. Accursed children forsaking the right way. They have gone astray. Having followed the way of Balaam, the son of Beor, who loved the wages of unrighteousness, but he received a rebuke for, for his own transgression for a dumb donkey speaking with the voice of a man restrained the madness of the prophet. These are springs without water and mist driven by a storm for whom the black darkness has been reserved. For speaking out arrogant words of vanity, they entice by fleshly desires, by sensuality, those who barely escape from the ones who live in error, promising them freedom while they themselves are slaves of corruption. Reread that, please. Yeah. <laughs> they, by promising them freedom. While they themselves are slaves of corruption. Is that not the sway away? Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the sway away. For by what a man is overcome, by this he is enslaved. For if after they escape the de defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. Wow, wow. Read that again, Lord Beth. For if they have... For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world by the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled in them and are overcome, the last state has become worse than, for them than the first. And we have witnessed that within yeah. the people in this documentary. Yeah. Their mm -hmm. state, yeah. yes. John Polk's state, oh, it, it's tragic to see what has happened in that man. Randy Thomas julie rogers these michael bussey the, these john smith alan chambers their state has become worse and worse and worse yeah. it's so it's so broken yeah. any comments about that i mean this is, that makes me cry I, my does. heart is broken over the, their deception but the scariness of them, their desire to lead others, like Alan saying in the lesbian church, you know, out there in California, be gay, talking to, you know, his assistant from Exodus who went into sadomasochism. This is like, how tragic. These people are so full of darkness and leading people into darkness. Yeah. I'm heartbroken. Yeah. And the sad thing to me, it reminds me of the Hebrews passage. I don't know. I think it's chapter 10 or 11, where it talks about how um, those of us that have been called out, how we are strangers and pilgrims on the earth, and we're looking for a better country. And it says if they had been mindful of where they had come out of, they might have had reason to return. But now they're looking for a better city that is built by God. And ultimately, um, no matter how much our feelings change, there are some we to varying degrees have changed. But the reality is we are all supposed to be dying to self daily because we are living for an eternal kingdom and not for the, 
the lust of this world. That's yeah. really good. You were finished? You yeah. Okay, well. Excellent. Do oh. you know the time? Yes. Okay. For it would have been better for them to have not known the way of righteousness than having known it to turn away from the holy commandment delivered to them. It has happened to them according to the true proverb, a dog returns to its own vomit and a sow after washing returns wallowing in the mire. I'm going to go ahead and read a couple of verses here out of 2 Peter chapter 3. Uh, being mindful of what Peter just uh, said, verse 3. Knowing this first, that scoffers will come in the last days, and they're walking according to their own lusts. And we are overcome by scoffers today in this sway way. And these once leaders are now failed former leaders. They're failed because they have given up the mission of the cross. They have really failed. And they're former. And I'm glad they're former because I don't want to be under their leadership. They were terrible leaders to begin with. Mm. And, and, and I don't say that with condemnation. They just should not have been put in the place of authority. And I, and I grieve over it. Yeah. And uh, and I want to remind us of a couple of other passages of Scripture. Laura Lee, with your kind voice, would you go to 2 Thessalonians and read 2 Thessalonians uh, chapter 2. It's chapter 2. And just read verses 9 through uh, 12. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. Sorry, I'm slow. 2, 2 Thessalonians 2, 9. 9 through 12. Okay. Uh, this is the description of the coming of the man of lawlessness. That is, the one whose coming is in accord with the activity of Satan with with all power and signs of false wonders and with all deception of wickedness for those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth so as to be saved. And for this reason, God will send upon them a deluding influence so that they might believe what is false in order that they may all be judged who did not believe the truth, but took pleasure in wickedness. So we have a people that were following the Lord, but instead of following him, they took pleasure in their sin mm -hmm. and they became full of error and they did not want to be saved. So as to be saved, they believed the error. They didn't want to lo love the truth anymore. They didn't want to love the way of the cross. And God, it says, God will turn you over. God will allow you to be turned over. And, you know, they're, they will mock even this. They, they're mocking the word of God. But if we have anyone here listening that has even a heart, half a heart to love the truth, follow the Lord Jesus Christ fully. This life is but a vapor and we're only here momentarily. And it's the next life that matters. And we have to be faithful to the gospel to remind people that this is a very, very narrow way. And so there is great hope. We have this documentary. We're not going to run the trailer, but I do want to mention, you know, there's this mockumentary, but we have a documentary called In His Image. And you can go to the website inhisimage.movie and watch the documentary. And there's also a uh, resource tab. And under the resource tab, there's additional videos that answer lots of questions. And uh, it's very empowering. When you all say it's it's a it's, yeah. it's a it's, it's, it's chock a great full of the word of God. Chocked full of the word of God. That's exactly true. Especially, I mean, you gotta love some of the theologians on there. They're just they're amazing men and women of God. I love Mary Cassian and her uh you know beautiful offering of of dealing with the image of God and male and female, and you know, Dr. Uh, Michelle Critella and dealing with the science on transgenderism. It's just full of truth. You want you want this, and then, and and then there's three other documentaries that you can watch. That uh, is the trio at the First Stone website. You can go to firststone.org, and you can read about them. Such were some of you, 
and uh, how do you like me now? And then the transform. And they're all online now, free to watch, and they're empowering, and they give great hope. And and that's what we're about, right? I mean, yeah. we're we're about giving the hope of the gospel. Laura Lee ministers to has over the last thirty years, hundreds of women. We've had the pleasure of ministering to hundreds of families now. Yeah. Um, we've got probably around thirty, actually, that are in, involved. The thirty-seven. Thirty-seven in in our parent family. And uh, fr friends group, mainly parents yeah. uh, that are grieving. And so there's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of work in the church that needs to be done. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, Joseph, sometimes your job is thankless, but you've got a very important job in helping keeping everything administrative. Uh, and Laura Beth, God is using her all over the world uh, to proclaim the, the gospel of Jesus Christ and that somebody really can come out of transgenderism yes. yeah. and even suicidal suicidal ideology yeah. and the, the 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 destruction that comes and you know they're they're actually saying you know this documentary is a way to try to help people from stopping committing suicide and yet the very thing they say they're trying to help they're going to end up actually yeah. promoting yeah. people right. to commit suicide it's uh, it's great it's a, it's egregious yeah. So uh, we come every week to bring Freedom Realized, which is about, you know, bringing bold truth and bold courage and, and courageous, right? We want to be courageous. What do we want to be courageous about? I mean, Laura Lee, you're being called to step up to be courageous in speaking the truth in the church. Yeah. And is that comfortable? It isn't. You know, I don't, I didn't think women should ever do that, but because I'm a church woman, and I'm in a church and I have influence in my home church, it's that influence is spreading within our realm. And I, I was like, wow, it's forcing me to have to like confront and to deal, which is good for me probably, but it's good for hard. all of us, right? <laughs> it's yeah. a hard pressure for me. Yeah. 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 So bold courage because, you know, it's the cowardly that don't inherit the kingdom of God. So we did, de we definitely need to ask Jesus to give us full of courage because we're in love with him. Right. Yes. And uh, I had the revelation verses, but I, I would encourage you read uh, revelations 21 verses six and eight, read revelations 22 verses 14 and 15, read these verses and see who it is that will receive eternal life and who doesn't. And the sexually immoral and the liar will not inherit eternal life. That's right. And that's why we're here. We want to bring the bold truth of that because we are filled with bold compassion. Yeah, that's right. And we have a lot of compassion for people. That's why we set and labor for hours and hours and hours with families and people who struggle. We want Jesus Christ. Amen. We comfort people with the same comfort that we've received, yeah, right? That's right. And so I'm your host, Stephen Black with Freedom Realized. Uh, we come to you again next week. Uh, at 10 a.m. Central, and uh, come and join us. And please remember to give to us, help us in this endeavor. For Jesus' sake and in his name we pray, amen.